Daniel Tse, Daniel Tse is graduated from the Slate School of Fine Art, University of sorry, University College London. She has exhibited both locally and internationally since 2008 in London, Korea, Moscow, Hong Kong, and Singapore. And certain discovery, her most recent solo exhibition took place at Chen Horry Contemporary Art in Singapore. Danielle most recently held a highly commented award in a reputable Rise Art Prize in 2018. She was featured in the Pink Magazine issues in the New Wave Singapore Next Generation of Artists and was named Artist of the Month by the Heartling in April 2017. Her works are held in private collections in Singapore, US, UK, and Australia. Traversing the boundaries of painting and craft, abstract and figurative, Danielle makes painting using paper and wood. This was a method developed during her studies, where her wall-based paintings evolved into large scale installations. This approach allowed her a spontaneous approach to making as each work grew widely across the walls resulting in a wisdom called creations, which execute a vibrancy and energy. Please welcome on stage Daniel Tate. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here with me today. And thank you, Pierre and Professor Xavier, for having me here as Artist of the Week during Imagination Week. Today, I'll be sharing with you the important bits of my art practice and my process. So a little bit about me, which Professor Xavier very uh, comprehensively covered already. I did my art school training in Singapore and then completed my undergraduate degree in London. So I've been exhibiting locally and internationally since 2008 and here I have listed one exhibition per year, which I felt summed up the year very well and was very significant in terms of my growth as an artist. And here you can see a picture of my studio in the final year of my degree studies in London. So art for me is very, very much intertwined and connected with my life. Uh, so when when people ask me, what inspires your work? It's very hard to just put it down to just one thing because everything I experience, my encounters with people, my travel experiences, they kind of all build up into this large resource for me to draw upon and what becomes of all of these things is, is, is my work. Uh, what you see painted somewhere, displayed in a gallery, is a response to all of these encounters. So what drives my practice is very s uh, nicely summed up by a Swiss German artist called Paul Klee, whose work you might know uh, and my his work a lot. And I feel this quote sums up the power of art and what art does. So why create? So I, in my opinion, the, I've chosen to express myself in a visual manner. Um, creation can come in all sorts of forms and I think everyone is gifted in some way to express themselves. It doesn't need, it can be visually, it can be through dance, it can be through music, it can be through writing. So for me, the, the way I express myself best is through painting and I feel the, an image is a very, very powerful tool. It transcends language barriers. Anyone who sees something immediately can identify with it. And it, it's not in immediately explainable. And it touches part of you that sometimes defies a certain kind of logic. And I enjoy that uh, relationship with something else, and it could be my heart, but definitely not my mind, because I cannot rationalize it easily. But I know that it, that image has moved me, or it sticks with me. Okay, so 
The most important thing um, I feel in creating my work is the process because what you see as a final artwork is just what is put out there into the world but what is often overlooked is the process of making. How, do, how did I get there? How, how did this come about? And that for me is also why I create. I enjoy the dynamic engagement and discovery along the way. Here I've summed up some current important bits of my process. I've tried to really analyze it and break it down because what goes on in the studio sometimes is, is, is really difficult to, to explain because there's so much uh, of uncertainty, but yet there's excitement, there's, um, there's a drive to want to make something to communicate an idea. But sometimes you are lost, like how, how, how am I going to do this best? Um, yes, in art school, we learn the tools like, and we learn skills to paint well, to have technical knowledge and things like that. Um, but a lot of the time I feel that I sometimes cannot follow what is described, or the rules, as, as, as one would call it, the rules of, of any kind of discipline. Yes, it's, it's absolutely necessary to know them, but it doesn't mean that that is the only way to create something good. There, so in, to sum it up, it's, there's no formula in, in this process of, of creation. But once you get everything in sync, then it's all of these things are working together really well, you get what I call a flow and energy. So when I, when I say that life is, is really directly related to my work, it's like everything has to be on the same wavelength because a lot of the energy that comes from myself is translated into my work and that's how everything is created. So right now, as a practicing professional artist, I channel my energies into these three things, education, because uh, so after I graduated, I taught uh, art for a couple of years alongside my art making practice. Then I, last year I did one community project where uh, I facilitated creative workshops to enable members of the public uh, to, and to create and discover things about themselves through art making. Today I'll be talking mainly about art making and this at the moment is, I've categorized them into two parts, my personal practice and my commissioned artworks. These include things like murals which involve, the, which involve uh, working with clients, different companies and brands to transform their spaces. So first up, my personal practice. Uh, this is a picture of the series of uh, works which I created for Uncertain Discoveries for my solo show uh, in 2017. So I was in, in, it was titled Uncertain Discoveries because I was investigating the gray areas in science, things that humans have yet to put uh, a definite explanation to. And that intrigues me because there's so much possibility in that, that we don't know, humans don't know everything. And I try to create my own explanations and responses to these gray areas. So these are some images of what they look like. I'll just run through them quickly. Each of them have uh, a narrative behind them and the title gives you a little bit of insight into the stories behind the works. Okay. Okay. So I'll stop here to share a little bit more about the work. So if you uh, take a look at the picture on the slide, it's me making the work. So these are collages. So the process of collage is completely different from painting. And being trained in painting, I've always been very used to having 
this big like pl uh, plan, like because when you whenever you start painting, you're faced with uh, a canvas, a surface. You have to determine the size, and you have to determine what goes on to that frame. At some point, as a student, I got really frustrated with uh, this process. I felt I wasn't really excited about painting anymore. I just I, I didn't, I felt restricted by the frame, restricted by the idea that I had to know what I wanted to put down. Yes, you can know in a, to a certain degree, like what you want to create with the work that's in front of you, but I didn't like having everything planned out. So what happened was that there was a project uh, with a theme called Swimming Pool, and I took this opportunity to try out something different. And this caused like a, a extremely pivotal shift in my work because I felt extremely liberated. With collage, it's co the complete opposite of, of painting. You break things down and you realize that everything can exist in small parts. You can, you are free to play and have fun. There is no pressure to fill up that canvas. You, a certain part, like something that strikes me that's really beautiful, can, I can just cut that out and place it on my wall. It might stay there, it might change the next day. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of freedom. And this discovery really has defined a lot of what I do now. And it made me realize that, yes, you know all the knowledge and resources. It's good to have that. But at the same time, you need to take risks, be spontaneous, and that there's so much possibility. And having that unknown, what people see as unknown, well, can cause anxiety, because you're not sure, you don't know. But that's also really exciting, because that's where the real discoveries, the real breakthroughs come from. So, something like this, you would see, most people when they look at it, you think, I planned it all out. I created this space on a sketch. But in fact, it's really the, quite the opposite. This has gone through a lot of changes, so I started with a small part, a cutout. So all, everything here is layered. So it's not on one surface, it's literally thick, built up piece of paper put together. And the size is defined only at the end, once it's finished. Okay, more images of the works from the show. Okay, so because of collage, I did not abandon painting, but I used painting only as the initial part of my process and getting to my final works. So I would do sketches and paint and, and things like that. So for a long time, I, I only did collage. But there are two shifts in 2018. One is there, I returned to painting, but with a collage mindset. So taking what collage taught me, which is to constantly break things down, reevaluate, never to just move forward along one singular path. Like, what if I did this? What if I did that? What if I moved that around? What does that look like? And then number two, I had several opportunities to move uh, my creation from the studio to the world outside. So how that happened was, so artists in general uh, make work very privately. And nobody, whatever people see is just uh, what is shown in galleries. The behind the scenes is, well, usually not seen uh, unless you get a chance to visit the studio. Okay, so creating on site is a completely different process because there's usually a very short time frame, uh, involves architecture, the space, the people in the space and sometimes a client, so the brand, the company that I, has engaged me to work uh, for them and create a work. So 
the question that I had was, how can I adapt myself to, to, to making in such a situation to make sure I can deliver the work within the time frame and still retain that spontaneous aspect. So yes, I could plan it out, every single detail, and just execute it on the wall. But I felt that that wasn't the right way to work. It, there, there was actually no point in doing that because I wouldn't discover anything new. I wouldn't be reacting to the energies in the space. So creating the studio is very comfortable because I, I decide when the artwork leaves the studio. I decide when it's finished. By creating on-site, there's a lot of question marks, different things going on. So this is one of the very first murals I, I painted uh, in 2018 as part of Singapore Design Week. So while there is a there is a structure to it, which is the concept and the the rough sketch, I generally improvise and leave 10 to 20 percent of the work to be resolved on site. That's quite a scary thing, but I think it makes me <laughs> really excited to go on site and work. I want to be surprised. I, I, I want to discover something new. Okay. This is another one uh, at Facebook Singapore's office. So some of uh, these time-lapse videos give people, I think, a much more interesting insight into the process of uh, an artist's day. But of course, before all of this, there, what is not seen is a process of brainstorming, a lot of revisions, iterations, conceptualization that goes on. And then once everything comes together, this is the what I feel is the best uh, art work to paint, and then I just go for it. Okay, so you've seen uh, an office space, uh, a house. This is a shop for, uh, an artwork made for an indoor plant shop. So they wanted to communicate the importance of plants in urban living, and this is called the power plant. So this is commercial space, which is already, I would say a semi-private space, not entirely public. So what I really enjoy about this is that you get uh, customers coming in, speaking to you about the artwork, what you're doing, and, and I think all this kind of flows into the, the wonderful process of art making that's outside of the studio. I, I really, as, I mean, as a, uh, a, a painter, trained and formerly in painting, I never imagined I would be doing something um, like this. And I, I really enjoy doing this so far because of um, the people I get to meet in, in such situations. And my work can exist outside of, of a, a gallery space, outside of my studio. And I can reach a completely different audience. Yeah, so now we're moving to another shop space. This was at Plaza Singapura at Dobie Got a Christmas mural. Again, in a very different space. And finally, um, this is an office mural in a corporate space for Trax Retail. So it's a company which is utilizing the power of data to change a very traditional industry of retail. And I got to do a revamp of their entire office. So I've been really privileged so far to be able to work with different kinds of businesses, understand what they do, and help them to communicate this in a visual manner. This is at uh, the Singapore Visitor Centre over on Orchard Road, communicating uh, the vibrancy of the Singapore heartlands. 
there's really a lot of joy and a uh, different kind of dynamism working with people from all sorts of industries. And together, the collaboration evolves into, it, it evolves and it challenges me to think outside of what I would normally do if it were my own personal work. Okay, so we have seen shop spaces, office spaces. This is a hotel that just opened last year uh, in Chinatown. The work is called Spirit of the Forest and it's inside a lift shaft. So the image, uh, the video you see is me on top of the lift cabin riding up and down as I go to spend the day there um, touching up the work and making sure that uh, everything is perfect. It's 13 meters high for a four meter shop house space. Okay, there it is. I couldn't fit it all into one slide where you get to see parts. So this work is interesting because you will never see the full work in entirety. You will just be able to see parts of it, fragments, and then piece it together. And I felt that this concept really gelled with the with, with the idea of travel, the concept of being a traveler, going to a hotel, seeing a new, and experiencing a new city, you usually get a sense of what the city is like in, in fragments. And then you try to make sense of it based on that. And this is a view of, of the artwork from each of the floors when you take the lift up and down. Hey, okay, so this work, is the final one that I'm showing you today. It's called Pulse of the City and exists as a hoarding for a building that has yet to be built. It's being built, but will only finish in uh, 2021. And you can see it if you are in the central business district area uh, where you drive past or when you walk by closest to uh, Raffles Place or Telok Ayer Station. Okay, so to sum up uh, my presentation, after speaking about my process and how things go, I feel like this is what my process looks like right now. And moving forward, I feel that when all of these things are working well together, there's a great flow and energy, and this leads to a lot more growth. I feel that this is, while this is applicable to art, my creation process I feel is also applicable to life, and that it's, it's a journey, the, the finished works, the, <laughs> the milestones, they are just pit stops, and then we continue again, so. We're forever learning, trying to improve things, challenge ourselves, and it's an ongoing process. So my message here today would be to just trust the process. I mean, the process is so much of, of the work that we do and the journey of life, so constantly be on your tippy toes, constantly reevaluate things, see how you can do something a little bit different, and to go beyond the frame, which was what I did with, uh, with painting. And that changed the way I work, the way I approach every project. And of course, <laughs> to enjoy all of it, because it's uh, the ups and downs, they are all part of it. The frustration, uh, without frustration, you wouldn't be able to enjoy the fruits of the labor and the, the joy that comes from it. Yeah. <laughs>